What's going on guys, this is Michael of GF, and today I'm back for another summer 2015 analysis video and this time I've got the two sets for the DC lineup that are releasing in August, the two sets outside of the usual winter wave of course, and these were also shown at uh, New York Toy Fair this past weekend and man do they look awesome. I mean they have some small problems here and there but for the most part what these what, what, what the minifigures we get with these sets are absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to talk about those and uh, man I wonder how many times I say I'm going to say fantastic in this video because I said it like what over 40 times or something in my last I don't know but uh, yeah so really looking forward to these sets in August but uh, we'll see how long this goes on for I'll try to go through these as quickly as possible but without further ado let's get into it all right so starting off we've got the Batboat Harbor Pursuit and this one's gonna be retailing for $29.99 it's obviously the smaller one uh, when it comes out in August and uh, yes yeah, so this set is really awesome for a, a lot of reasons first of all we've got the debut of our first ever Deathstroke minifigure and my god it's not exactly like the Lego Batman 3 version that I think all of us were expecting, and they obviously avoided making a lot of new molds for that, but I mean, for comics, it's actually pretty good, I have to say. I really do appreciate the Deathstroke minifigure that Lego has done here. It's just there's one problem I do have with this comics version of Deathstroke that we're getting for our first time, and that's the fact that the face is printed onto an orange head. If it was printed onto a black head, I think I would have appreciated this minifigure ten times more, but the fact that it's printed onto an orange head and the black just looks totally out of place it's just kind of odd because usually it's the orange that is supposed to stand out on his helmet and not the black so it does look a little weird but definitely does not ruin the minifigure because I'm still glad that we're getting him regardless like I said the torso printing uh, is fantastic I'm not even sure if I said that but uh, the torso printing is awesome and you can see we've got a nice little pattern going on there uh, right in you know right behind his ammo chain uh, going across his chest there and his utility belt as accurate to his appearance in the comics he's got a standard sword um, and then also I do want to talk about this again I talked about it when, when I was talking about Spider-Man in my last analysis video, but uh, we've got over-molded boots. Now, with the Simpsons sets, we had over-molded sleeves. That's when over-molded uh, Lego minifigure parts started to show up last year, and now Lego's introducing over-molded legs, so now we can have boots on our minifigures, and that's really awesome. It's not going to be like Plastic Man, where it's like printing, and you, even, like you, as soon as you bend the legs, you immediately see the true color of the actual leg, but no, because it's molded, and we're getting over-molded legs, we're going to have a full wrap-around boot on each leg, and that is awesome awesome. Cannot wait for that. And I'm really glad that this is going to be a continuing trend from this point forward because, man, I've waited long enough throughout all these years. And, uh, yes, yeah, so the other two minifigures included, we've got the same exact Batman that we had in the Gorilla Grodd Goes Banana set earlier, uh, you know, the start of this year. And uh, it's pretty much the exact same Batman, same new cowl, same new torso. Love both of those two things. And uh, we've got the new capes obviously continuing, which we all expected. They weren't going to be going anywhere, of course. We do get boots for him. I just kind of would have preferred some printing on his thighs, too. But I guess maybe it's a little bit too much to ask, given that we're already getting uh, the overmolded boots, but uh, yes, yeah, so like I said with Batman, we do get the overmolded boots, but in black, and that is really awesome. Once again, so glad this is finally a thing, and uh, we're getting those in black, like I said, and then obviously uh, we do get uh, Robin included with this set, and Robin does have a newly printed torso, which is really nice. Probably one of my favorite Robin torsos that we've seen. I love the straps on the top there, and all the additional details down toward, the, uh, down toward his waist, and I believe that is the same Robin head. If not, it's a new one. It's just, you guys, I have I haven't really been buying the sets that had Robin in them. I mean, like, literally every time there's a Robin minifigure, for whatever reason, I usually can't get the set. And uh, the same thing happened with the DC Winter Wave this year. And uh, Robin was in the Black Man to Deep Sea Strike. Couldn't get that set. So I was like, I haven't really seen a Robin minifigure in a while. So forgive me if that is actually uh, not a new head or if it is. But uh, regardless, it is still nice for what it is. He does have a new uh, hairpiece, which is pretty cool. I mean, I would have preferred the one that this sleepy hair that we're getting with him in the Joker Land. Um, but I mean, this one is still nice and definitely works as well and the bat boat itself I would have to say is honestly surprisingly a really good design I love the amount of detail they were able to put into it and you see we've got the actual we've got actual boat pieces as part of the design and that's really awesome the massive boats you see on the bottom of this thing and the two that you see the, the uh, minifigures sitting in front of the control panels appear to be stickers and then we've got flick fire missiles on uh, the back and I absolutely love it when Lego uses that actual missile piece uh, for their flick fire missiles it really does look awesome and uh, other than that you can see we just have a lot of detail and uh, there is one playability feature, and that is the fact that you can actually flip up uh, that radar dish, and uh, it actually looks pretty cool. I'm not sure what the actual purpose of it is, like story-wise for this set, but it still looks really awesome. And uh, when you do pull it up, you can see that you have a, a bunch of control panels that say incoming and shows uh, the, the bombs that Deathstroke is unleashing onto uh, Batman's uh, Batboat here, and it's definitely pretty cool. And obviously, another feature is that once you close the cockpits over the two minifigures, you can detach their boats and, and have them you know, set individually attack Deathstroke. 
So, I mean, that is definitely pretty cool. And uh, Deathstroke's little boat that he's got going on, too, is uh, it's pretty cool. It has a couple of flick fire missiles, basically uh, what look like just a bunch of massive torpedoes. They, quarter, they sort of look like buoys in a way. Um, but he's obviously, he's, he's got a uh, crate attached to a chain onto his boat there. And uh, that looks pretty cool. I'm not sure what's in it based on the photos we can see. But if I skip to the box art, you can see actually that there is a couple of diamonds that it appears that he, he's after. So I guess that is the premise of uh, practically almost every DC set ever. They're always after the same exact diamonds or the same exact gems uh, using that same exact mold. But overall, this set looks awesome. For 30 bucks, getting a uh, the, the debut of Deathstroke is more than enough for me. And the fact that the Bat Boat actually is a really good design and uh, for what it is, is just a plus. So I mean, overall, I think the set is awesome and I'm really looking forward to it. So uh, yeah, Deathstroke does have the same Alien Conquest gun that, once again... Lego can never let go of because apparently it's like the only gun they have. Cannot wait for the day that those cease to exist. But uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and move on to the Joker land. Alright, so here we go with the Joker land, and man, I guess I'll just say right now that uh, this one will be retailing for not a $119.99. This is going to be like pretty much the biggest set uh, for DC that we've had so far, aside from the Batcave and maybe a few others that I can't remember off the top of my head, but it is still really exciting because uh, we've got the debut of Beast Boy and Starfire in the same set. I'm talking about those right now because that's easily the two main things that I'm most excited for because wow. That hits me right in the childhood. I mean, like, that's a direct hit, man. I, I, my sister and I, we, we pretty much, our origins came from the Teen Titans animated series. So, I mean, that is so freaking exciting. And you can see Beast Boy does have the overmolded boots, this time in purple. Really nice to see that. And I don't know why he's got little tiny holes in his hands. I guess that was only for the uh, minifigure that's being displayed at this uh, Toy Fair display. But, I mean, you can see that the torso printing is uh, pretty nice as well. Fairly simple, but it is based off of uh, the design that we have in LEGO Batman 3 Beyond Gotham. This facial expression you're seeing on Beast Boy is I guess the alternative facial expression because the alternative the other one uh, the secondary one is more so like uh, he's much more uh, excited and confident while this one he's obviously much more concerned because he's got himself into some deep shit man and also we've got uh, the werewolf piece molded in uh, dark uh, uh, dark green this time around and then he's got the green ears so that's pretty cool and um, and Starfire Starfire is um I have to say, I'm pretty impressed. I didn't think LEGO was going to go this far with Starfire, let alone did I ever think we were going to get a Starfire minifigure, but you can see that this minifigure, not only is it accurate, but I mean, the printing was is just awesome. LEGO didn't even really need to go this far with the printing, but they did anyway, and it makes for one hell of a minifigure. And uh, you can see that the face uh, is really nice. It definitely nails, you know, her Tamaranian face, I guess. I don't know. That kind of sounded awkward, but you can see the torso printing is also really nice. Uh, it's, it's it's not exactly the most complex torso printing we've ever seen, but uh, definitely gets the job done. The same can be said for the belt. There is no consistency uh, from the uh, you know the top of her belt onto uh, the belt piece itself because that's a common error that we see on pretty much uh, every torso mini or, you know every minifigure whose torso has belt printing. And then the legs are really nice because uh, it actually has wraparound printing. It doesn't go obviously around all four sides, but uh, that's why I'm really glad that we do have the uh, molded boots instead of printed boots from now on because uh, printed boots wouldn't be able to go around all sides as I was mentioning previously with uh, Deathstroke but uh, that is the case for Starfire here unfortunately and it does not appear that the leg printing going from uh, the front of her legs onto the sides is consistent either it doesn't seem to match up but I mean that's okay I, it, it still it doesn't really take away from the minifigure all that much it happens it still does look pretty good and uh, we've got a couple black streaks on her thigh area as well and then also we've got Harley Quinn in this set and uh, Harley Quinn is a, an entirely new minifigure aside from her helmet mold she's got an entirely new face both sides of her face are completely new. They look great, and uh, that's probably the better, the best Harley, Harley Quinn face I think we've ever received. I'm actually pretty fond of the new design. The torso is uh, nothing to be excited about. It's pretty simple. It's we said for the belt and everything, but uh, what's really awesome about Harley Quinn is that she has leg printing, and the leg printing does actually continue on to the sides, and unlike Starfire, it's actually pretty consistent looking. Like, the, the, the transition from the front of her legs to the sides actually is pretty seamless, and I'm pretty happy with uh, what Legos have, has been able to achieve here with uh, with Harley Quinn's leg printing. It looks freaking awesome. I'd have to say this is probably the definitive Harley Quinn minifigure. And um, then obviously she's got her hammer, of course. Great to see that again. And then in this set, we've got a bunch of other minifigures that I didn't talk about at first because, um, quite frankly, they're not new. And uh, they are in some ways, but they're not exactly new to the point where it's worth talking about first. So in this set, we do, of course, have Batman. And uh, Batman is the exact same Batman that we had in the Gorilla Gragos, Bananas, and the Batboat more recently, as you, 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 I just pointed out. 
but he's got the boots. And so pretty much practically the exact same Batman that I just talked about with the bat bow, but uh, still really nice to see that minifigure again, especially with the uh, over molted boots now. And uh, then Robin, he's uh, included with this set as well. I'm pretty sure Robin doesn't have a new face in this set. I'm pretty certain of it this time around. But uh, what's really awesome is Robin now has the addition of black sleepy hair. And it's like, why did it take Lego all this time to finally figure out that Robin has needed black sleepy hair? It's like taking long enough. But uh, yeah, he's got the standard yellow cape. Uh, but Poison Ivy is uh, pretty much the exact same Poison Ivy that we've had uh, for like the past couple years. Now there's no difference. I'm pretty sure this is her second appearance, if I'm not mistaken. She might have been in another set that I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, still really nice to see Poison Ivy again. No difference. Uh, same torso, same legs, same hair piece, same face. Nothing new, but once again, great to see the minifigure again. But the Joker Land itself. I mean, originally with the preliminary photos, I was pretty skeptical. Like the tiny, like uh, low res, blurry photos that uh, we usually get uh, before these pictures. It was it was discouraging because it looked like a Duplo set when size when you size down the set and you blur it and you blur this image. It does look pretty bad. But I mean, when you look at it now, while the massive Joker and you, you know the fact that the massive Joker pretty much has leaves for ears and you know things like that and the fact that it's so damn colorful, you can actually kind of get past it because you look at it all and it does make sense. I mean, you've got the all, all, all you know you, you got like the tiny little Ferris wheel of uh, of ducks down there and Beast Boy in there secured with a uh, one by one lock attached to his handcuffs, which I think is pretty cool. I want to mention that I do love the new addition of locks. Uh, that's pretty awesome. But I mean, and then you've also got the slide and that's molded in a you know that's one massive purple molded piece. And uh, then you have the acid pit, which has some stickers wrapped around the glass. And I mean, yeah, it's really really colorful, but it's it, it all makes sense given that it is a carnival and now that I see it in, in this light it does look pretty good actually and um and then we've also got some uh, garbage cans on fire, which uh, which Harley Quinn is dangling Robin over, and uh, that's pretty interesting, I suppose. And you can see that there are a ton of stickers on this Joker Land set. You can see we've got a deadly sticker right in front of uh, of, of Penguin. He's obviously uh, spray painted that onto that little banner there, and then another thing spray painted onto uh, this sign here. We've got Joker Land, and uh, then you can see on the on the sign uh, in front of Poison Ivy, you see we've got Toxic spray painted onto onto that one, and then once again, as I pointed out the uh, stickers around the acid pit and then we've also got uh, I guess like the mirror room stickers with some smiley faces on uh, those which are pretty cool we've got some spirals uh, you know in, in green and purple there and then uh, then we've also got Starfire who's actually imprisoned uh, by Poison Ivy so it seems that pretty much everybody has been captured aside from Batman of course go figure and so Batman is uh, in his new Batmobile which is pretty freaking awesome and I have to say a lot of you have been really excited about this Batmobile I don't know why but like with every time every time I I talk about this set to somebody someone mentions the Batmobile and I mean I personally don't see it I mean while yeah it's good it's not like I mean I would per I personally prefer the one that we had in Two-Face Chase if I am to be honest and it does have a couple of uh, black spring-loaded shooters so uh, that is definitely new and pretty interesting we I have never seen black spring-loaded shooters so that's pretty awesome um, but yeah then moving on you can see we've got what is uh, just pretty much like I guess uh, stud shooters on the back and that's kind of weird because it's like the stud shooters are acting as the engine which is different but I guess cool if uh, Batman is to shoot out of the Batmobile which is definitely not something out of the ordinary for him and then obviously the cockpit is removable and I doubt there's anything to be seen inside but thankfully by use of the new capes you can put Batman in there pretty easily um, so yeah then the Joker he's got a pie I haven't even talked to the Joker yet the Joker same exact Joker there's no difference with him same torso same head same hair but uh, this time around he does have a pie equipped from him taken straight out of the collectible minifigure series or one of them anyway and uh, then the eyes I believe those are stickers and not printed on his massive uh, like Joker head that he's got built there which is uh, pretty cool I wouldn't really call it the Joker head because obviously I think it was already a part of the uh, carnival so I guess just clown head would be more fitting and um, yeah so other than that you can see we, there is one playability feature uh, behind uh, Harley Quinn there I should point out as well there is a uh, wheels of fire logo or wheels of fire like banner that you can see uh, and then on her sign she's spray painted Harley's and uh, then her two little symbols on you know her, her three little symbols rather her three diamonds on top of that and then um, this playability feature it's kind of difficult to discern what what exactly this this is. It looks like for I don't know how, but it looks like it may be just a simple uh, playability feature that is attached. You know, a few Techni pieces that are attached to her motorcycle that allow for her to uh, roll up and down from this beam. And I guess that makes for a cool playability feature. It doesn't really seem like there's anything uh, you know interesting to it. I can't tell honestly, but for what it is, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, it works. And then uh, there's pretty much not a lot else to go over with uh, with the 
the with the set. You'll notice we do have a little penguin included with the set as well for Penguin uh, himself, and then we've got a little shark uh, fin coming up from the water. Two of them actually, and that's pretty awesome. Never seen that done before. Uh, and then we've got a, obviously a massive uh, man-eating plant for uh, poison ivy. We've got a bunch of handlebars for the seats uh, that you can see there. I, I, I would assume that you can equip minifigures onto those pretty easily if you wanted to. Um, and I mean. Other than that, I can't really see what's going on inside the mirror room. There's not really a lot of photos that uh, really take us inside there. It's, I mean, it looks like there are some more stickers inside of it based on what we can see. You can see we've got like a massive Joker sticker on, on the glass there. But once again, I can't really see what's going on there. And the box, given that we don't see the back, we can't tell, on uh, you know, based on the box either. But I mean, overall, the Joker land looks really freaking awesome and definitely way better than the preliminary pictures made it seem. Because like I said, when you have this really si small image and it's... It's, and it's blurred and you can't even tell what the minifigures are going to be. I didn't exactly have high hopes for this set, but now that I see it, it, it looks way better than I originally thought. So I'm definitely looking forward to it, especially because of the new Beast Boy, Starfire, and Harley Quinn. That All three of those minifigures being included with this set, and I say Harley Quinn because obviously this is a new and uh, really awesome version of Harley Quinn. It's all very exciting. I mean, I, I think this set is going to be really fantastic. Can't wait to finally assemble the full team of the Teen Titans when hopefully one day LEGO does make Raven and that uh, we can have the full-on Teen Titans team like uh, just like the series. But other than that, though, guys, we're, uh, that is pretty much it for this analysis video, and uh, now we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap up this video. Alright guys, and there you go. That's pretty much it for this analysis video on these two DC sets releasing in August. And uh, I mean, there's really not a lot to complain about with these sets. As you saw, it's really just nitpicks. And really, the, the, these sets are pretty fantastic. I mean, probably the one thing that does bother me is how LEGO still has yet to fix the skin tone problem with Batman. That is still something that pisses me off. They, they sort of fixed it with Captain America uh, in the Age of Ultron sets. But for Batman, he's uh, he's still got a pretty severe tan. But yeah, guys, so if you enjoyed this analysis video or maybe found it for me to be sure to let me know by dropping this video a like below and or your opinion down in the comments i'm going to be trying to get at least two more videos out for you guys this week hopefully i don't lose power because here in north carolina we're about to get an ice storm uh as of the time i'm recording this video so i'm really just trying to hope i'm just praying that i'm not going to be losing power and i'll be able to keep doing videos for you guys because i do have the avengers hydra showdown that i still want to review for you guys and i got that like three days ago so uh yeah but you can also follow me on the twitter the book faces and the instagrams because there i post all kinds of behind the scenes photos i, I always say this man and preview photos of uh, minifigures that I'm working on such as my own Age of Ultron minifigures, upgraded Age of Ultron minifigures. You guys know how it works. I've pretty much mentioned it in a lot of my recent videos. I'm going to be taking uh, my own parts of my own uh, Age of Ultron minifigures and applying it to LEGO's official printed parts and uh, whichever ones are accurate to make for one hell of an upgraded Avengers Age of Ultron showcase that will be debuting on April 31st. April 30th. Damn it. I keep saying April 31st. I almost did that. And I did that in the last video too, I think. Gosh, damn it. April 30th. I always forget every year. There's no April 31st. But uh, yeah, guys, so these two sets look awesome. So glad to finally see Mr. Slade Wilson as an official minifigure, not even mentioning Beast Boy and Starfire, which look equally as fantastic. So yeah, count how many times I said fantastic in this video, and uh, I think I'm going to end it there. So I will catch you guys later. There are super jumpers included with these sets, I should point out, but I don't care. Okay, bye! Hey, I'm back for another Lego D no, in August, and uh, man, great, phenomenal, phones, I love them. Fix the whole flesh tone uh, skin, you know, the skin, pro uh, words, work with me. And this is going to be $20.99, $20.99, no, that's not, that's not, okay.